My mother was very good at instilling in me the need to brush my teeth daily. And today's guest is someone you might have met if you didn't or weren't able to. I'm Brian Johnson. And this is Nobody You Know. Hello and welcome to Nobody You Know. I'm Brian Johnson and today I am sitting here actually with a co-worker who agreed at the last minute. She rescued me from doing another episode about myself. <laughs> uh, so this is Debbie and uh, Debbie, the, now that we've started, I realize I've never heard you say your last name. Oh, it's Stumbaugh. You, here, lick my hand again. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and this we'll, is Kelly. <laughs> we'll get through this. We'll, we'll distract Kelly as best yeah. we can. But in, in uh, kind of pre-planning this episode, you said, well, I thought you surely you'd be fascinated by your own quilting because you went on for hours with my wife the day you two met. But you said something about medical teams. Oh, yes. Yes. So let's go ahead and find out what what you have to say about that. What What is, what's the story here? Um, so I am a, or was a dental assistant by trade. And um, I had started up at Oregon Health Science University and worked up there for about 10 years in what was called hospital dental service. And we dealt with all the patients' complaints and concerns for their oral health while they were in the hospital. Um, and then we moved over here to Central Oregon and I was looking for a job and I found an ad in the paper for a dental van manager is what it said. Dental van manager. Van. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. It had no clue what that meant. I assumed it meant I sat in an office and I did scheduling and, you know, kind of that. So I applied for the job and um, Medical Teams International was actually, is still based out of Tigard, Oregon, um, outside of Portland. And they started as a medical supply um, kind of warehouse clearing um, for sending medical supplies all overseas. Okay. And to uh, kind of reuse and rehome and redo things that were being thrown out or disposed of, um, both med medically, anything, bandages, uh, walkers, whatever. And Could it they, be like the grocery outlet of yeah, medical supplies? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And they were sending them all over the world in big container, cargo containers, to other nonprofit uh, agencies. So um, they had one dental van, and over a course of I don't know how long, they expanded their fleet to um, I think at one time we had 20 of them. And they ranged anywhere from 25 feet to 42 feet. And um, when I applied for the job, I didn't realize I would be driving. Oh, fun. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> and it was funny because I went over for the interview and met everybody. I still had no clue that I was going to be driving. That's this. about what that's what I was about to ask is, did you find that out before or after no, you signed on the dotted no, line? No. Uh -uh. Oh, wow. And I still thought, you know, thinking manager that I was still going to be sitting, you know, on a phone dealing with that. And, uh, it, they hired me, and I um, <laughs> I still didn't know. <laughs> and I was one of those kind of people that don't ask. I'm like, okay. You know, it just sounded like a really fun job, and it, you know, utilized all my skills and my experiences that I had accumulated over the 30-some years as being a dental assistant. So, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, I, I, have to, I have to ask then. <laughs> yeah. What kinds of things did they talk about in the interview process? Um, they talked about my experience as a dental assistant. They talked about what jobs I did in the dental office, kind of how I felt about working with homeless and uh, volunteering, recruiting, because it was all volunteer-based. I was basically the only hired uh, staff. I was the only hired staff person. Okay. And so I just, I, I kind of went along from the clues that that was what I was doing was I was just, you know, coordinating, you know, recruiting, supplying, that kind of thing. Okay. It wasn't until um, after I'd been hired, I'd gone over for the training 
and they took me out of one of the vans and the guy said and this is what you'll be driving and i went drive driving <laughs> driving <laughs> what I, i'm sorry back up <laughs> And he let me drive at home, and the one that I drove that day was the big one. It was the 42-footer, Oof. and we were in downtown Portland at a partner there that was tucked in behind a church in an alleyway, and I had to pull that sucker out into a one-street lane with cars on both sides. <laughs> and Bill was like, you're doing great! <laughs> they hired me in November of 07, and because of the weather and getting it across the pass, they wouldn't let me have it. So they just basically told me to start calling doctors and kind of getting some of the legwork done. And then I could come over and go shopping because they had a big warehouse full of dental supplies that I could choose. And um, I was allowed to stock the van and get it all set up the way I liked it. And at that time, they had money. They had quite a bit of money for the dental program. So it was kind of like you could, it, you know, the sky's the limit, you know. <laughs> and I could have anything and put anything on there and do it any way I wanted. They kind of gave me a credit card and go, here, <laughs> go shopping. So the the point then was, was, I mean, you're technically working for them, but this becomes your little office to it was, kind of set yeah. up as you please. Yeah. Yeah. With the purpose of providing free dental care to Central Oregon. We actually have, a lot of people don't know this, but in Central Oregon, we have five uh, mobile, um, not just dental, but medical. Uh, Mosaic Medical has two, um, Medical Teams has one, and then um, who else? There's two more. Oh, off the top of my head, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's what I was. I was a one-man dental office. The van had two operatories in it. It looked just like a dental office, except for it was on. It was an eight. It was a thirty-six foot motorhome. <laughs> and you, so you were your your training was as a dental assistant. Mm -hmm. So you were you weren't a full fledged dentist. No. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things were you qualified to to do then? Um, I was qualified to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was licensed by the state of Oregon to take x-rays. I could take x-rays. I could do a, a kind of a cursory uh, triage. Um, I could set up all the procedures. I could sterilize. I did basically everything the dentist, I did everything the dentist didn't do. So... <laughs> Were you, could you do a cleaning like a hygienist? No, uh-uh. Okay. I could do, um, I could do a um, kind of a cursor, like just a profi is what, it's called a profi where you just go in and with a cup and some paste and you just kind of polish the surface and get rid of plaque. Okay. Um, th those are things that I could do, but um, there, you know, there isn't a lot that I could do. And the dental van wasn't really set up to be a complete dental, um, uh, what do you call, office. Right. Uh, okay. Basically, we were there to help the homeless population or any of our partners that we worked with, with dental needs that were severe. And oftentimes, they were very severe because people couldn't. At that time, in 07, there was no dental coverage. Uh, the state of Oregon didn't have dental coverage with their, um, with their plans. Um, people couldn't afford dentistry. Lots and lots of people couldn't afford dentistry. And so they just went months and months and months and years and years and years in dental pain. And by the time we saw them, um, it was beyond saving. So we did a lot of extractions. Uh, we did do some fillings. Um, the dentists always tried to save whatever they could, but it wasn't, you know, it, by that that point, either through neglect or lack of hygiene or lack of oral care, um, a lot of, there was a lot of, we pulled a lot of teeth. <laughs> literal, literal tooth pulling. Yeah. So that's, I'm still trying to kind of create a picture, but you would partner up with a mm -hmm. dentist here and there who yeah. would do the actual okay so basically what we did is we got partners and our partners could be like mosaic medical um, i worked with saint charles uh, with their er department because um, they found out by me because they were 
they found out about me said, can we call you if we have somebody who has a need? I'm like, sure. Uh, the next thing I know, I was getting over 300 calls a month <laughs> from St. Charles saying, we have somebody who needs you really badly. And I went to them and did some figures. I asked them to run, because I do have some medical billing experience and you know, back scenes behind an office. And I said, have you ever run a report to see exactly how many people you're treating in your ER? And they're like, um, no, but we know it's a lot. I said, well, would you do that for me? Would you check into it just to get an idea? And they found out in a six month time period, they were spending over $1.2 million Ooh. in dental emergency care, which they couldn't treat because they had nobody to do it. So they would basically check the person out, make sure they were you know, healthy and okay. There wasn't any massive infection. If there was, they'd give them antibiotics and then they would um, uh, tell them to go find a dentist, mm, which okay. many of them couldn't. Right. So they partnered with us and um, I started going to St. Charles once a month. Uh, I worked with the veterans with Covo and a lot of the veterans programs here in Central Oregon. Um, I worked with partners. So basically my territory was everything on this side of the mountain from California to Washington, clear over to Idaho and uh, Nevada. Like Fossil, I was driving up there once a month and spe spending two days. And in in the in the that's quite a road to take in that van. Yeah, so I have a <laughs> I've funny, been on that road. Yeah, so I have a funny story to tell you about that one. Okay. If you know about that road, you can see your back end and your front end at the same yeah. time, literally. <laughs> so I'm creeping down in there the very first time in the fog. Oh. Can't see the road. Don't realize that I am now headed into the belly of the whale. And I get to the bottom, I get out, I crawl on the ground and kiss it because I've never been so glad to see <laughs> flat. <laughs> I go in there a couple of times and something happened to the van and I had partnered with um, Beaver Coach and they said they would take care of me. Of course we paid the bill, but they would get me right in. They would always take care of me and they really did. And I had to take it in to get it fixed and I got a call and they said you ain't driving this nowhere oh, dear. and I said why I said I have five clinics this week and five clinics next week he said cancel them he said the chassis is not attached to the van body that all the U bolts were gone <laughs> so okay hold and on if, hold on hold on says, Wait, now, you, you you were in Fossil when it needed this repair? No, I had gone in several times. Okay, all right, all right. And I had come out, and this was one so time. So what, what we had now was the the A frame of this car. Modal. And sitting on top, just resting on top, was the rest of the van. Yes. And he said, and this Oof. is what he said to me. He said, if you'd gone around a steep corner, it probably would have slid off. And I had just come back from Fossil. And I said, you mean like going into Fossil? <laughs> he said, yeah, we don't advise that. And I was like, oh, uh, too late. <laughs> wow. Do you have a, just a wild estimate on how many people you helped? Um, I did a report. Uh, that was part of it was I had to. So not only did we have partners, um, I also recruited Zenis, but I also had people that sponsored the van. So people would donate to our, you know, program mm -hmm. and I would have to run figures. And, um, at one point at about eight years, I had ran a report and we had done over $2 million worth of free dental work here in Central Oregon. And we could see an average of 10 um, patients, sometimes less, depending on the doctors. They mm -hmm. were, you know, they all had their, um, their way of doing things. Um, so we could do 10 patients a clinic in a five hour, so it was five hour clinic. And I did five a week, you know, uh, for, the whole 10 years and sometimes more sometimes I'll, um, I do seven days a week I didn't realize how um, how underserved 
Central Oregon is. There were lots of um, services available on the west side whole bunch of free clinics, free mobile things. Um, the state had more money on that side because population probably. And so there were, th there were services available, but nothing here, nothing mm -hmm. at all. So I would travel into like Lapine, um, uh, Fossil, Mitchell Spray. Um, I'd gone clear up to Boardsman um, several times. That was always fun going down the Columbia River in a in a box kite <laughs> and you never know you know I was getting an average of maybe three miles to a gallon um, if I hit the wind just right <laughs> I could get up to seven all right <laughs> if I had a good tailwind you know um, I, I worked with a, a lot of um, the local tribes um, especially in the Klamath Falls area you know it was so much fun and I got to work with so many amazing people all of my doctors who volunteered for me, I recruited them. You know, I went out in the Dell community and introduced myself and sat down with them, told them about the program and what we were doing. And um, they, I had an amazing 25 doctors that volunteered, traveled with me, uh, went into these areas, and they were they were all so good. And they really cared. They cared about the people. They cared about doing right. Um, even though sometimes it was sad what we had to do. And um, they brought their staff oftentimes, so I didn't have to, you know, be dental assistant and coordinator and site, mm -hmm. you know, representative. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was very interesting. Is Are you going to hear that on the... Possibly, but we probably also should wrap up okay. because I try to keep them under 20 minutes. Oh, anyway, okay. So, so. But. anyway... So it was 10 years of wonderful experiences, working with wonderful people, helping people. Good. So. All right. And something, anyway. something is starting up over oh, there. Oh, yes. There you go. So this is probably a good, time is this a good time to say thank you, Debbie, for joining me on Nobody You Know. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you click the like button. If you enjoy the whole channel, click subscribe and the little bell to give you a notification every time a new episode is loaded, which, if everything goes according to plan, is 6 p.m. every Tuesday night Pacific Standard Time. If you'd like to be on the program, uh, we have a low budget right now. Uh, as you can see, we're sitting on a porch. We've knocked over water. We've had a dog. It's exciting times and somebody's out there doing something on their property but you know it's it's all about meeting people and finding out the the interesting stories from their lives and i know you've got one so if you're close enough for me to get to drop me a note at 10th and fur at outlook.com and we'll get you on the program as well because everyone is interesting and you don't have to be famous to be fascinating <laughs> So thank you once again, Debbie. Thank I'm Brian you, Brian. Johnson. This is Nobody You Know, only now you do.